Let's do some news! My name is Mike B. A.K. Phony. Today's date is February 14th, 2020. God, I'm gonna mess that up for like probably the entire year. I'll get it right next year for sure. I'll get it right next time. Oh, oh bad pets. Thank you so much. The alerts are turned off. New subscriber. Appreciate that. Uh, well, those alerts are on still, actually. Uh, today is Valentine's Day. And you guys are here with me. Say me, I'm your Valentine. Or is it just like a weird, like, time zone thing you guys are all gonna go out and get laid later right is that the deal is that the deal that's a deal i know i know i know i know i know uh well happy valentine's day to all of you and if you're spending it alone good <laughs> think of all the money you saved i <laughs> uh, i am fortunate enough to have a beautiful wife who i uh, does not give a damn about uh, valentine's day at all so much so that this year i decided not to say anything uh, thinking, you know, it's like, maybe she just, every year it's just kind of like, okay, well, doesn't want to do anything. Okay, cool. Uh, and then she had and then like two days ago, she's like, she says, uh, she, she said, do you want to do anything? By the way, do you want to do anything for Valentine's day? And I'm like, oh my God, I love you. That's awesome. <laughs> it's like, sure. Yeah. Let's like, uh, let's watch Parasite because I won all the awards, uh, and, uh, orders some sushi. So yeah, that's what we're doing tonight. Sushi and, uh, Parasite. <sighs> Um, not even Valentine's Nugs. No, no. Sushi. Valentine's Sushi. That's what we're going to do. It's going to be delicious. It's from our favorite sushi joints. Um, but yes, we still do have Parasite and Chill. Yeah. Uh, we have to watch Parasite. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, first off, it's won a bunch of awards. Second off, Jen's Korean. Okay. She's, she's like, she's like genetically predisposed. Like she has to watch it. There's no choice but to watch it. Um, and so, yeah, it's going to be fun. I told Declan, I said, Declan, uh, this morning, I said, hey, tonight, tonight, mom, mommy and daddy are going to watch a movie. It's, I, th I, don't, I think it's kind of a weird, scary movie or something. So I don't know if you want to watch it. Uh, and he was like, mm, I don't know. And I was like, and oh, also it's in Korean. And he's like, okay, I'm going to play games. And <laughs> it was like, all right, <laughs> good. I'm fine. That's fine. I get it. I understand. So yeah, it'll be fun. I'll let you guys know how it is uh, after we watch it. I'm I'm gonna keep my I'm trying to keep my uh, my uh, expectations low because you know because all, all the awards and all this stuff and it's like I don't want to I don't want to go in and just be like oh this is gonna be the greatest movie and then it's like oh you know it was good but it wasn't like amazing right you know, it's gotta keep keep it low. So, Tor said it was good. Okay, I trust Tor. Um, new chat for every movie you don't want to see him. I know. <laughs> no, but the problem is he can hear it though. So if I'm like, oh, well, Declan, the thing is, it's not in English. So you know, I don't know. He'll be like, and then he'll hear it, right? He'll know I'm calling him out. Hey, 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 cut that shit out. They're chasing each other and being cute. <laughs> so I gotta tell him to stop. Let's get into the actual news though. While well, we're bullshitting out here, apparently his drama is a quirky humor. Cool. I'm looking forward to it. <gasps> What's the button for this? I keep moving my buttons around. GeForce Now has launched. I don't have a sound for that. GeForce Now has launched. It's a subscription-based service that you can get right now for $4.99 a month for the foreseeable future. Probably about six months or so, it's going to be the introductory price. We don't know what the price is going to be after that. But what is the service? What does it do? Well, those of you guys who have been using... Uh, the, the service uh, <laughs> for the past like five years. Like seriously, this thing has been in beta forever. Uh, I used it probably back in like 2015 or something like that. Uh, and what it does is you log into your PC with your, and I haven't used this service yet. I'm just gonna tell you guys how it worked when I played it because I'm it's the same thing. Um, but you log into uh, your, your NVIDIA GeForce, you know, experience or whatever on your PC and it will find all your games, and then you can uh, load an app, you know, app to, to whatever device you're going to be playing it on, whether it's Android or iOS or uh, any of the NVIDIA devices, like the NVIDIA Portable, the Shield Portable, the Shield TV, all that good stuff. Uh, and then you'll be able to stream your games from your PC to those devices. Uh, and you could do it not just from your, uh, you'll be able to stream games, not just from your local network, but also outside of your local network, I believe. Uh, this is very similar to Steam Link. The difference is that because uh, Steam Link also has apps, you know, has has apps on your various uh, platforms where you can go and you can stream your games uh, on or off the network. You don't have to be on your local network. Uh, the difference is that Steam Link is, as you may have guessed, for Steam games, uh, not necessarily for all the games. And that's where NVIDIA GeForce Now comes in, is that you can now stream any games. Um, well, almost any games. And we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, so... 
like I said, it's not a new service from NVIDIA. They just finally worked out the, the, the kinks. Some like, some like 300,000 people have beta tested it. Like it's a huge beta. Like everyone's basically had it. Almost, almost all games. Uh, the difference between it and like say Stadia, Stadia is uh, exclusively a uh, Steam, uh, is a game platform, a game storefront uh, and a streaming service, but not necessarily for the games you already own. That's where NVIDIA GeForce shines is that it just finds all of your games and then you can play them wherever. The system, the service worked really well back in 2015. So I'm just, I'm just gonna assume that it works well right now. <laughs> they could not have gotten worse, okay? It's like, like on live, like if on live could have just stuck it out for another few years, they would have eventually gotten better. Um, all the games, asterisk, exactly. Does it only go from PC to other mobile-ish devices or can I do PC to PC? Oh, I'll be out of country, can I stream a PC to laptop? That's a great question, I don't think so. Uh, but, you can download, uh, I think it's called Blue, 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 something. Uh, Chat can help me with this. This is, it's an Android emulator, BlueStacks, BlueStacks. Uh, you can download BlueStacks, which is, which is an Android emulator that runs on your PC. And then you'll probably be able to load up the app through there. And then you can probably play it there. Maybe, probably. Mm. Um, let me see. So the way it works is you sign up, you, you, you log into the service to play. If it's, if you have a free, if the free account, which is, you can sign up for a free account, um, uh, you will be able to play assuming that there is nobody in the queue in front of you. Uh, and when you do connect and you actually get past the queue, uh, you only get one hour of actual stream time. And so oh, do not use, is it, oh, is it? Okay. So dark, dark has correct me on this. Okay. Says so that it is notorious virus dump. I'm going to go ahead and delete mine. Just, do I still have an install? Let's see blue stacks. Nope. Oh, mm, nope. Aha. That was an old, that was an old, uh, old install of windows. Yes. Dodge the bullet. Uh, so the, what was I saying? <laughs> oh yes. So, uh, the free, uh, if you have a free account, you get one hour of stream time and then it kicks you off and then you have to, uh, uh, get back in the queue and then play again. It's entirely possible that if there's no queue, you could just get right back in and continue playing. But you still are limited to the one hour stream time. So you can pretty much consider the free account to be kind of a demonstration, just a demo uh, of the tech. So if you want to see how it works, you can go and check it out and see how it works yourself. Um, and if you pay the $5 a month, you get six hours of playtime, uninterrupted playtime, assuming that, you know, your local network and all this other network, whatever, that kind of supports it. Um, and so they said that uh, nobody really plays past six hours per session. They said 99% of players don't play past six hours or, or they're like AFK or they're just not really doing anything, uh, which... Which, you know, I, I think that some of us would probably counter that argument. <laughs> some of us would be like, mm, well, but the difference is that you don't necessarily, it's not like a six hour limit per day. Uh, it's a six hour limit per session. So if you play six hours and then you end up getting off the service, you know, getting, you know, obviously you're going to kick off the service, uh, you can, you can reconnect and the, the $5 uh, premium accounts get past the queue, like immediately. I'm assuming that, that at some point, if the service is big enough, then you'll still have some kind of queue to, to work with. And so it'll probably just put you towards towards the front of the queue uh, and maybe not necessarily instantly get back in. But after six hours, you should probably go ahead and take a break, maybe. Uh, just, yeah, exactly. Just take a pee break after six hours. Yeah, pretty much that. Um, personally, I think this is great. Uh, I love my Steam Link. I, I've told you guys about my Steam Link so many times. Uh, I, I think Steam Link is just the absolute best service available. Uh, this is just the NVIDIA version of that with the support for not just playing games through other services, but also buying games through uh, the GeForce Now uh, app. Uh, and, and those service, those games will exist DRM free in your respective libraries. Now that part, I don't exactly know how that functions because I did not download and try the updated version of GeForce Now. So I don't know what, what they mean by you buy a game on one of these platforms like Epic Game Store or the Steam, uh, the, the Steam Store, and then you get the game DRM free like that doesn't those things don't like they don't do this. They don't they don't do this. They kind of do this. Right. So uh, I'll have to wait for somebody to. To go and try it for themselves and just let us know how that works. Uh, Steam Lake is my favorite cancel product. Yeah. Well, is it? Well, the Steam Lake app is still uh, it's, it's still a thing. It's, Steam is just really bad with just general app support. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> let me see. I think right now, let me just check real quick. We'll do this live. Let me see. Steam link. They made an update 
uh, earlier this week to the Steam Link app on all iOS devices. And the update brought in this really interesting bug that made it so that it does not launch. So let's see what happens. Oh, it works. They must have updated it. Okay, good. They updated it again. There we go. <sighs> I should start playing and see what it does. Oh, cool. They actually added a, a, a quick, a kind of a quick, uh, uh, quick links to your favorite games. So you got Temtem, Fell Seal, and Dead Cells. That's perfect, actually. Wow. Huh, cool. You just click a button, get right in. Okay, that's enough of that. Um, so yes, GeForce Now is available with all of your games, except, except, except for one particular game company's games, and that is... Activision Blizzard. Activision Blizzard gave them just the, 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 the best free PR you could possibly ask for by saying, please take off our games. Please don't stream our games. Uh, they are the first and only company to reach out to, St to uh, NVIDIA and ask them to you know, remove their games from their service. And I could see you know, that the reason why GeForce has been so successful over the years, which by the way, I am almost 100% certain that all Blizzard games have been able to be streamed like Overwatch through the GeForce service, even back as early as like 2015 or 16, back when they first launched this thing as beta. So this is, <clears throat> uh, they don't sell the box. Oh yeah, they don't sell the box. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but yeah, so this, this is uh, just like, oh, they launched it. Oh, well, it's a real thing now. Now we have to act. And so they decided to then reach out and tell them to not stream their games. Now there's some mix mixed uh feedback on this from players um some people some people blame blizzard for or activision blizzard what do you want to call them uh for you know pulling their games like a bunch of dicks right uh and other people blame nvidia for not securing the rights to be able to stream those games i am fairly certain that nvidia did not secure any rights for anything they have an app that runs on your pc and all it does is just stream those games to your mobile device. It just connects two apps. It doesn't, it doesn't add an extra service. It doesn't add extra layer, whatever. Uh, the difference is that they, it's a paid service in order to use that streaming, uh, you know, that, that, the streaming function. Um, so maybe in that respect, Google or uh, Activision is saying, oh, well, hold on a second. We, could, we, we need to find another way to make money off this. We can't just have somebody else make money off products because, you know, we, we know that they like money. Um, it's been, it has been speculated that they're probably going to build their own service. Uh, I think what makes a little bit more sense is that they're going to stream exclusive to uh, Stadia, Google Stadia, promote that at the very least. Uh, so if you look over here, this is, uh, this is how much money that uh, they made. <clears throat> now, this is, this is allegedly, Esports Observer reported this. They said they have somebody else familiar with the discussions and the talks for the actual deal that took place But when, they, when Activision Blizzard uh, signed up with YouTube. Uh, to be the exclusive streamer of uh, Overwatch League and basically all of their stream, all of their uh, esports stuff, except for StarCraft. Um, really hard to get rights. This could be a court battle. Yes, exactly. This is this is uh, this could definitely be a court battle in the future. But we know that <clears throat> we already know that there's money exchanging hands between Google and um, and Blizzard. We just don't know if that it, it, you know, what the what the uh, details of that is. We don't know if it. Is not just streaming your your uh, your, your esports events exclusive to YouTube, but also could include Google Stadia as you know, kind of like this is this is the uh, the, the exclusive service that you could stream Overwatch on to any of your devices. So, um, <clears throat> what is this misunderstand a misunderstanding? They say yes. Yeah, so I'm gonna read you the quote, the exact quote here. It says, "Per their request, please be advised." This is from a spokesperson at Nvidia uh, speaking on the. Uh, uh, on uh, Activision pulling their games, says, please, per their request, please be advised, Activision, Activision Blizzard games will be removed from the service. While unfortunate, we hope to work together with Activision Blizzard to re-enable these games and more in the future. So that was their uh, that was their initial uh, response from one of the spokespersons there. Yeah, uh, it, it's it, right now. It just kind of looks like NVIDIA GeForce now seems like a cool thing, cool product for folks that that you know want to play their games remotely i could tell you that you know if you haven't if you haven't used either steam link or you know geforce now um you're really missing out on some pretty like some pretty interesting ways of being able to play games i mean basically wherever you want um i've actually gone out and i purchased a small clip that goes onto my xbox one controller and it basically sits my phone like this on it and you know your phones are big enough this is the this is the small iphone right uh so you guys probably have bigger iphones but yeah or bigger whatever um 
but it, it will uh, it allows me just basically on the weekend just sit downstairs with you know Jen and Declan. Jen's watching TV. Declan's playing video games. I'm sitting on the couch playing you know Tim Tim on this. Like it's it's just such a great uh, you know, service. If you again if you haven't used it, like it's just great tech. It's great tech. Play your games wherever you want. It doesn't have to be sitting in front of the computer. Nothing. We all got big whatevers. <laughs> all you guys over here swinging your whatevers. Uh, Seems like it's great for playing Jackbox games. Jackbox games in the main room with people over. Oh yeah, there you go. Tons. There's tons of uh, functions you could get out of. Uh, GeForce, or sorry, uh, Steam Link and GeForce Now. Uh, GeForce Now to me is no different than an internet cafe. Yeah, <clears throat> that goes with you anywhere you go, which is kind of neat. So, <clears throat> yeah, GeForce Now. Activision Blizzard says no. Suddenly, all of a sudden, everybody knows what GeForce Now is. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, lots of free advertising there, all the headlines and everything. So good, good for G good for Nvidia, I guess. Um, let me see. Next up, let's go, actually let's uh, let's jump into the the uh, 23rd annual Dice Awards. You guys know what that is? It's it's the award show that nobody watches because it's not overproduced and it's not jam packed full of of different uh, advertising for games that are not going to come out for the next two years. It's just an award show. They just bring people up and they clap and they give awards. That's what they do, right? It's it's just a very very not a very complex and crazy over the top show. So. The winner of the game of the year is the Untitled Goose Game. <laughs> and I wanted to actually go through and throw one of the dices. It's like a 20 minute. So, so it's like a 20 minute thing. I'm okay with that. It's it's actually pretty, it's actually a pretty long show, which is probably one of the reasons why nobody buys it or nobody watches it, is because it is a very uh you know long, not long, but you know, it's it's a it's a regular, you know, show length, but it's just not like you know, and here's a, here's a new release, and here's the latest one. Oh, here's somebody from Sony, and here's uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's just none of that crazy stuff. It's just here's uh, next an award, whatever. Um, yeah, just going through. I was just curious, want to cl click through some of these and see what. Uh, so, Apex Legends won uh, online game of the year. Uh, Control won a ton of awards. Uh, uh, let me see. Let's go through here. So here's Control. Control won a bunch of stuff. Let me see. They won Outstanding Achievement in Art Direction, Outstanding Achievement in Original Music Composition, Action Game of the Year, Outstanding Achievement in Game Direction. They were nominated for Game of the Year, Outstanding Story, achieve, uh, Technical Achievements, uh, all kinds of stuff. Death Stranding. Death Stranding didn't win as many as people would have assumed because it was Death Stranding. And they just assumed it was going to get all kinds of awards. But they won uh, Audio Design and Technical Achievement. They were nominated for tons of stuff. Adventure Game of the Year, Game of the Year, Outstanding Animation, Art Direction, Character. Uh, uh, character so yeah they, they they got plenty of rewards uh dirt rally 2 got the uh, best racing game of the year uh f1 2019 did that get anything oh it was nominated for best racing game of the year well hold on a second did i actually did i read that wrong let me go back and look at dirt rally 2 did i read it wrong uh nominated for oh so who actually won the racing game of the year let me go and look i read that wrong at the first time here <clears throat> let me see racing oh my god mario kart tour <sighs> <laughs> okay, well, Mario Kart Tour won the uh, racing game of the year. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, it's just me or is the D Death Stranding. I haven't played Death Stranding, so I can't really comment on it, but it definitely felt like a game that was like crazy hyped. Kind of like, you know, most movies that won, win a bunch of Oscars. Crazy hyped. Then you watch them, it's kind of like, well, uh, Super Mario Maker 2 won one family game of the year, which. <clears throat> sure, yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, let's go keep going down. Let's see, Disco Elysium, outstanding achievement, it's outstanding achievement in story, sports game of the year, FIFA. Wasn't it FIFA last year and FIFA the year before that? I don't know. Uh, did Shadowbringers win anything? Well, we could pull that up right now. Let me see. Shadow, oh, no, no, not that Shadow. Shadowbringers. Let's see what they won. <gasps> Nothing, but they were nominated for role-playing game of the year so rpg of the year that's that's good the nom they're nominated for it that's that's fantastic that's what they want uh role-playing game of the year actually went to the outer worlds which probably upsets a lot of people robbed Ro i i mean i like outer worlds i thought outer worlds was a lot of fun uh i played through it the second time and i didn't finish it on the, the second time but i was playing through on the hardest difficulty and it was like just annoyingly bad um, it was, it was fun still, it was difficult, but I think there was like the, the, you had to save back at your base or something. I don't know. There was some kind of save mechanic or something that was just so, it was punishing. It wasn't even like fun punishing. It was just like, oh, come on, really? Uh, but otherwise though, like, yeah, it was, it, I would say Outer, Outer Worlds was definitely an above average game, but it wasn't like, I mean, if that was the best RPG that came out last year, then maybe I didn't play enough RPGs because, you know, um, 
is a fair hit for there. I was okay, not great, just okay, yeah, exactly, exactly. I was definitely needed some custom difficulty settings. Yes, yes. I don't know if they've actually added any end now. I haven't played it in a while. Uh, I even thinking about that. I thought about it last week, and I was just wondering. I was like, damn, I should get back in there and uh, and keep uh, and keep moving on my. I keep going moving forward on my on my save because I skipped a lot of side missions the first time I played it too. Uh, Mortal Kombat 11 got fighting game of the year. Obviously, like I already mentioned, Untitled Goose Game got the best best game of the year. Uh, did Outer Worlds get anything? Well, they they did. They did. They got uh, best RPG of the year, and that was it. Winner, the Outer Worlds for role playing game of the year. Let's go and click on that and see if there's any other nominations here. They were nominated for achievement in story. So who won that one then? Uh, oh yeah, Disco Elysium, of course. Yeah. Well, that that is definitely warranted. If there's one thing that Disco Elysium is not lacking in is uh, Outer Wilds. Oh, what did I say? Did I say worlds? <laughs> Wilds. Oh, okay. You're looking for a um, different game. Hold on. Wilds. Thank you. Uh, Wilds. Let's, Outer Wilds got game nominated for Game of the Year, nominated for Game Direction, Story, and Game Design. So they didn't win in anything, but you know, there's some pretty lofty, uh, you know, pretty big games that are in these categories. Like, for example, Untitled Goose Game. So... <laughs> So there you go. Come next year, Hades will get something involving RPG and roguelike. Probably. Is there a roguelike to, uh, actual category? I don't think so. That's, I feel like the ro roguelikes are not necessarily a recognized game um, genre necessarily because it, a roguelike could be so many different games, you know? Um, it's more of a play style than it is an actual game genre, I would think. So yeah, maybe next year, you know, there was something, Hades might get something. Uh, what I played at Hades, that one time I did use the Epic Game Store, was pretty good. So it's entirely possible that they do win something in the future. But that's it for, the, for DICE, the DICE Awards. Next up, speaking of awards, Jeff Cayley, you guys know who that guy is? He's a pretty big name in video games. Natalie Chan, speaking of roguelikes, expect excited. About yes, 30XX is a thing. I saw a video for it. Yeah, I saw that video they launched for it. Coming soon, right? Something like that. Uh, they said, what is it? If you go to the Coming Soon page, for so 30XX is a is a sequel to 20XX, which is a uh, Mega Man X style of roguelike, right? Uh, and it's really fun. It's like really good. Procedure generated levels. Like it's so much fun. Uh, so 30XX is coming out. And when you go to 30XX's Steam page, it says uh, coming is when the US is coming soon typically it says coming in 30xx near 30xx probably like it's probably gonna take a while <clears throat> Dorito Mountain Dew man that's right that's right that's right it is, he is a Dorito Mountain Dew man so Jeff has announced that he is actually not going to be attending E3 uh and so I'll go and read this for you guys it says for the past 25 years I have attended every electronic entertainment expo covering hosting and sharing E3 has always been a highlight of my year not to mention a defining part of my career I have debated on what to say about E3 2020 while I want to support the developers who will showcase their work I also need to be open and honest with you the fans about precisely what to expect from me I have made the difficult decision to decline to produce E3 Coliseum for the first time in 25 years I will not be participating in E3. So I know that all of you guys have opinions about Jeff, and that's fine. Um, low, low energy Jeff Kaylee. Yeah, I I understand that some folks have you know you don't you don't like him. Whatever game awards are trash. Whatever. But this is a big deal uh, when it comes to E3. E3 is already uh, suffering some losses. It's a slow. It's a slow. It's a slow leak, but it's happening. Sony has pulled out. Sony's not, not attending anymore. Uh, it's only a matter of time probably until Microsoft doesn't show up anymore. Uh, and then, uh, you know, Jeff Cayley's not going to be producing the, um, uh, producing the anything at the event. And just so you know, like, Jeff, Jeff Cayley actually handles, he's not just a host. I know we see, we see him, you know, we see his face and we just think he's a host. You know, just get out there, just hold a microphone, just interviewing people, whatever, and stand next to some Doritos or something. Um, but no, he actually produces like he is like the main he's like the, the, the brain behind a lot of what you see, like the game awards like that's he's not just the host, like he's the everything. Uh, so, you know, respect for him in that respect, you know, in, in terms of like being being able to be all these you know, uh, roles all at the same time. Uh, but yes, this is definitely one more nail in the E3 coffin. So he did make a couple comments. I went through his replies to see what he was saying. And he said that, uh, you know, people were asking him questions. Uh, and the question was, <clears throat> what fueled your decision not to participate? And he said, a ton of factors. I just don't really feel comfortable participating given what I know about the show as of today. So, ooh. And then he says, I think E3 needs to become more digital and global. It's a brand that means a lot to 
uh, it means a lot to a lot of people, but it shouldn't be on the, be a show floor type of event. Interesting. Yeah. So this is, so obviously Jeff is kind of alluding to that, you know, E3 as it stands right now is just stale. It's just not a thing that is really worth the money. I, I've, I've been to probably about like eight E3s over the, over the past, you know, 15 years or so. And yeah, that's, that sounds pretty bad. Totally. He doesn't really go into any other details outside of this. this is the only, this is the only details we got out of all the replies that he had sent. So I wanted to see if he like said anything crazy. Uh, but, uh, what the hell BTS tour song requests or, uh, man, every time these fucking K-pops shit, every, low effort, low is low quality. Get out, get out of my feed. I never click on that shit. Always get fan cams on my feed. Anyways. So, um, K-pop isn't real, <laughs> please. Yeah. So E3 is definitely taking a hit. Um, it does. I, I have been to so many events and each time it's good. It's expensive. Uh, it's not cheap to go to E3 at all. I, I got in under media pass or under, you know, whatever pass through the companies I was working for. And so, you know, I got a chance to go and see and talk to a lot of people and just take part in some of the shenanigans. And, you know, it's a fun event to go to for sure, like GDC, but it just doesn't really have much of a purpose when like, look at Nintendo Direct, Nintendo Direct, they, they just do that. They just do that shit online. <laughs> like they just stream it. They just put out as a, a pre-recorded video. They just put out every once in a while. People are like, yes, that's all they care about. Uh, they don't care about having a show floor and all that stuff. You know, there are other events that are more tailored to that. You know, Minecraft, Minecraft has its own convention, uh, which has a bunch of, you know, Microsoft stuff there, I'm sure. Uh, Blizzard has their own convention. Uh, Sony pulled out because they have their own convention. You know, like there's, everybody has their own convention and then there's GDC and then there's PAX. Yeah. If you, and that's the other thing too. It's like, if you're going to, if you're going to talk to the fans, you don't go to, yeah, TanoCon. I mean, sure. Yeah. Throw it out there. No, it's true. Like everybody's making their own convention. So why, why would you even bother going to a, an industry convention when all that same stuff could be found at one of the multitude of, uh, of different, uh, like if you go to a convention to see like two or three booths, like why do that when you go to that specific company's convention itself? Like, I'm not going to go to PAX to, to go see Blizzard, right? I'm going to go to BlizzCon. Hold on a second. What is that? Make sure my weed. Uh, okay, just checking, just checking, just checking. Um, bl yeah, and BlizzCon also has a virtual pass too. Yeah. So yeah, it definitely feels like there's um, there's definitely a trend of, and, and I, I want to say that Nintendo Direct is probably the best example of this, where it's like, they're not even bothering. There's no Nintendo Con. Like, they're not going to put a Mario Con or anything out there. Like, they're just going to put out a video every, you know, every, every, you know, so often I don't, cause right now they're a little late on their last one. Right. Um, and then, uh, and then that's it. And people are happy with that. People are happy with that. They get the video, they watch it and then they comment on it and that's it. Like they, they get the information they need. They don't have to go somewhere, get a hotel, do all this bullshit. Yeah. You know, yeah. They don't have to do all that stuff. So E3 is definitely not doing well. And I don't know what's going on behind this E3 in terms of like how they're handling this. Like there's no, uh, yeah, no, I don't know what they're doing. No idea. And Sony followed Nintendo's footsteps. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, the Ubisoft dancers. Yeah. Huh. It, pretty much the only thing that really comes out of E3 is pretty, is is the uh, the fake controversy, right? Pretty much is that for the most part. Let me see. Let me move this thing out of the way here. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, well, speaking of things that we thought were dead or dying, that might not be. I don't know. <gasps> Bioware put out an anthem update. Hey, for all three of you guys who are playing. Honestly, I don't know how many of you guys have actually played the game. I'm sure probably a number of you have, but I'm certain there's probably three of you guys who have logged more than 20, 30 hours. Uh, what is anthem? Yeah, three has genders. I know exactly, exactly. I mean, a lot of people probably got in and played it, but I don't think it's not like Destiny. It's not like Destiny. So anthem put out an update. Uh, this came from Casey Hudson. The Casey Hudson, who I had the pleasure of interviewing, I was a huge, I was a huge mess because I was a huge fucking fan, and I interviewed about about uh, Mass Effect. This is like a long time ago, and I was just like, I was so nervous, I was so nervous. I'd probably be nervous today too, um, but yeah, because I would, I know I'd sit down, and be like, hey man, tell me, let, let, let's talk about indoctrination, please. 
Anyway, so he says, uh, over the coming months, we'll be focusing on larger on a longer term redesign of the experience, specifically working to reinvent the core gameplay loop with clear goals, motivating challenges and progression with meaningful rewards while preserving the fun of flying and fighting in a vast science fantasy setting. And to do that properly, we'll be doing something we'd like to have done more the first time around. Bum, 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 bum. Playtesting. <gasps> what? Yeah, so they're gonna they're actually gonna be putting uh, some uh, some resources towards actually testing the product and uh, and then putting it out for uh, to us. And because they're gonna be putting resources towards that, they are going to be eliminating seasons, which nobody cares about. Because and I say nobody, meaning like the general population of game, people that play video games don't give a shit about the seasons because nobody's really playing that game. Uh, so they're going to be cutting season support uh, and then they're going to be working on uh, basically, yeah, Anthem Reborn. <clears throat> yeah, and we have the, yeah, so seasons were, were already eliminated slash eternally delayed. Well, they're going to say that they've been working on it and they're not going to work on it now. Uh, so this is and I put out a tweet uh, and I stand behind it still that this is kind of this is like the the. Uh, the current state of AAA games, it seems like, you know, everybody, everybody wants to be the next No Man's Sky slash Final Fantasy 14 Reborn. Everybody wants that glory. They want to they want to come out the gates with huge amounts of hype, get tons and tons of box sales or digital sales or whatever sales. Uh, and then the game just takes a shit. Your Metacritic score <laughs> that everybody cares about uh, just takes a shit. Uh, the reviewers, everyone shits. It's a terrible game, terrible game. And you have the people who are like, no, this game's amazing. I love Bioware. Please, I love my game. Uh, and, and then the game dies. And then they go silent. And then they come back later and they say, hey, we got some updates coming for you. Stay tuned. And they try to reinvent themselves. Uh, and it just seems like this is this is the way that like all these AAA games work because they don't have the they don't have the benefit. Can't believe I'm calling it a benefit, but they don't have the benefit that indie indie developers or smaller game companies have of being able to just jump straight into early access and and say this is an early access title. We're gonna you know uh, continue to. Uh, flesh out features do all this stuff uh because that's not what we expect from these big publishers we expect when they launch a game that it's a full game and we buy it and that's it it never works out that way it never works out that way it's it's it the games always suck they come out day one sucks <laughs> uh some of them do okay but yeah it's it's just a uh, it's a trend uh aggressive finger point that's right aggressive finger pointing uh cube world was an emotional roller coaster yes it was unless it's nintendo nintendo yeah nintendo is like the one that somehow they they still have a, a qa team or something they still test their games for reals cube world made me sad yeah that's right day one patching right well it was day one patching and then it turned into turned into uh year one patching even destiny even Destiny has gone through these phases. I, I think right now, I don't know where they're at right the second, but you know they go through these phases of um, you know, where the game launches and it's rough. Shit's rough. And then they listen to the community and they come back and they fix it. They, it's always like, it's always this dip. And Destiny does it like this, right? It's kind of like they kind of connect. They kind of connect by Christmas lights. Um, no Man's Sky was more like, and then it fell. And then it popped back up. <laughs> then it came back up and it was good and that that like you know that uncanny valley type you know just just huge crater is where triple a games are going now um no man's guys uh, nintendo has the mario club the best play testers in the world bungie as, as a developer has been turbulent uh ever since it left microsoft destiny kind of reflects this yeah i mean I, I i get mixed reviews on uh on destiny but for the most part the people that play it love it i feel like the people that actually play the game like love it and recognize that it has its flaws but like i said i do feel like destiny is kind of like the soft version of what we see as a whole with the AAA market where they launch a game it sucks and then six months later they're like well hey buy our game again because we're gonna put out this huge patch it's gonna fix everything for you guys like that's that's what we're seeing uh whereas destiny feels like it's a little bit more like oh we tried we missed the mark okay we're gonna do this okay well that's better okay let's go year three <laughs> okay, here we go now we finally reached you know uh equilibrium with with the community we're good 
The last season was super grindy, but still lovable. Yeah, there you go. Me, yeah, nah, me and Destiny 2 are just friends. That's right. I would like to be more better friends with Destiny. I'm not going to lie. I bought the books for fuck's sake. Um, so yeah, uh, this is something that, you know, we don't know. We don't really have an exact ETA or anything like that, but we could probably expect that by the end of this year, we'll have some more information on Anthem. Uh, six months, I think. Uh, so we'll get some more information. So later on, we'll get some more. Uh, Destiny, give me my casual friends with benefits. Or you get Monster Hunter. Wait, uh, launch on console, then buy game again six months later on PC. Well, yeah, that was a thing. <laughs> uh, speaking of games that tried to be like Destiny, but then uh, didn't do well. Let's make some more. How about this game from the Bulletstorm devs called Outriders? Have you guys heard of this one? Now, uh, Outriders is very similar to, I mean, very similar to Destiny. Uh, it is a shooter. You do have uh, abilities, skills and abilities. Uh, they do have three person squads. Uh, they do have three classes. The classes are the Pyromancer, Devastator, and the Trickster. So you have like your, you know, your, 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 uh, your range, like your Warlock, your Titan, and you know, you, 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 you see the trend. Like it's, it's definitely a, uh, a Destiny like. Now you may not get that from this image, but if I scroll down just a smidge, maybe this one. Maybe this one kind of looks just a wee bit. I actually thought I had a friend who uh, uh, who tweeted this out and they were like, ha ha, it's destiny. I thought he was joking because I was like, that is actually destiny. Like, I seriously thought that was destiny because it looks like. It. Yeah. Uh, so. <sighs> oh, ouch. So it's, it's just it's painful. It's painful how much like destiny it is. Um, Hellgate London. I feel like the armor and I had the armor and destiny. Yeah, the, the mask on the on the Ford character and also the one on the left definitely had and even the one on the right. There's a skull there's a skull mask or something in uh uh in uh in Destiny. So yeah, this is a game coming from People Can Fly, the guys who made Bulletstorm, which uh had great gameplay. But I don't really remember what happened with the game after that. Like I remember the gameplay was was tight, it was good. Um, but then after that, it just kind of took off or kind of just went away. Uh, there was something that I, I noted here that I thought was pretty interesting. That's kind of that to me sets it apart from uh, Destiny and the likes is that they have a difficulty tier system, and the way it's described in the article is uh, they call it world tiers. Uh, is that you can play the same area over and over but increase the difficulty and you can increase the difficulty on the fly. So it, it, it sounds a lot to me like torment levels in Diablo um, or, or yeah, maybe in, you know, division as well. So for me, it could feel like torment levels, but yeah, so there you go. So like, uh, like, like division. Uh, so that's something that, you know, if you think about the way to describe it, it was like the world, right? So you're on the outer world. So let's say you're in Bungie and you're, you're zipping around on your sea doo and you're just having a good time. And then you could set the difficulty higher. Well, you can't really do that in Destiny. You don't really have, uh, well, as far as I remember, uh, you don't really have the ability to like increase the difficulty of mobs in the surrounding area based off of whatever, because I think everything's all dynamically done. Um, and so they are setting it up. So it's like, okay, we can actually make it like you can actually crank it up and make it fucking hard by increasing the torment levels of the world tier levels and all that. So that I thought was kind of, kind of nice because there's a lot of times you run around destiny. You just kind of feel like, Oh man, I'm just, I'm just doing nothing. I'm just doing nothing. Uh, variable bullet sponges, maybe, maybe, but yeah, so it's <laughs> kind of can't believe how much I saw this picture. I was just like, give me a break, dude. Let me give you a, here's, here's a closer look. Like it's just, it really, 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 I mean, come on. Like <laughs> somebody, somebody had to like actually make that and was like, you know, this looks a whole lot like destiny. <laughs> uh, let's see. Wow. We're actually zooming through this. We've got so many things. Uh, isn't that such a dude dead? Oh man. <laughs> Shh, spoilers. <laughs> uh, let's see, man. We're almost, we're almost done already. What the hell? Put all this fucking news in and we're zooming through the news. Give me a break. All right, greatly inspired. That's right. So, oh man, it went up again. <laughs> okay, I don't remember if we talked about the Nintendo PlayStation on this show, or maybe a previous show. But the Nintendo PlayStation was a prototype that was made. There was, uh, I think, less than three hundred actual physical consoles made. That was a failed joint uh, venture between Nintendo and Sony. 
And this was one of those things where you look at the history of, you know, games and you wonder like what could have what could have been, right? Because Sony went solo, exactly. Sony went solo and they made the PlayStation. Um I don't know exactly why, but we know that they were heavily looking at going CDs uh instead of cartridges. It just cartridges weren't their thing. And so they made 300 of them. Some of them still exist. Not made by Soldier Boy. Uh, and this one is currently for sale for, well, you have to bid on it, $350,000. $350,000 US dollars. Convert that to wherever you're from. Uh, do- US dollars don't work like yen. You don't just, you don't just lop off a comma and it's like, yeah, that's it. No. It went up so much. Now, this is going to be one of those things where, uh, sure, give me cookies. Yeah, I'm going to track my ship. Um, this is going to be one of those things that the more popular it gets, the higher that bid is going to go. We don't actually know if it is going to sell for whatever amount it is. It could just be someone just like, just, just being a jerk, right? Uh, but I will tell you that yesterday it was at forty eight thousand dollars yesterday morning it was at forty eight thousand dollars so it's gone up three hundred thousand dollars in one day and a lot of that is because of uh, because of the uh because of the press that it's getting and i mean what it is it, it, yeah it's it's it that vintage plastic yeah it definitely has a look to it that's like wow this totally feels like you know, early nineties, you know, it's, it's, it's the super Nintendo controller. Uh, it's, it's the super Nintendo, but, but, but it has an optical drive. Uh, and you know, Sony decided to go ahead and ditch and just go for their own thing. I really wonder, yeah, what could have been, man? <laughs> like what could have been with this? This is, uh, I mean, there, there are games that work for it. It's super Nintendo fucking plugs, plug it in. Uh, I saw a video they were playing street fighter two. I don't know if all games are supported on it, honestly, cause I don't own one to test <laughs> unless you guys want to go ahead and put together some money and pick me on up for me, please. Um, no, uh, the, I'm going to assume that it plays probably most super Nintendo games, like maybe at least the, the early one, oh, probably all of them actually. And I want to see someone reverse engineer that system and sell it, uh, uh sell it like what analog does. Oh, uh, this is not happening was turning point in, in gaming for sure absolutely yeah no this is huge i mean now it's like you know sony be, sony split off from nintendo and became one of the major players uh and it, it would have been it would have been nintendo versus microsoft pretty much uh, and and not nintendo versus sony versus microsoft crazy it's crazy how that that all kind of played in red versus green versus blue really <laughs> that's what it is now you rip this thing off who will sue you nintendo or sony oh man i actually don't know who technically owns the patents for the uh uh for this thing i mean i must i have to I, I, you 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 want to look at it and say Oh yeah, Super Nintendo probably. Nintendo does because look at the controller. Well, it's like maybe they own the, the patent for the controller, but the console itself is definitely not, you know, um, I mean they probably still own the patent for it, but it's not something that everyone hit production. So in order to maintain a trademark, you have to use it, right? Isn't that kind of like the general rule? If you have a trademark or a copyright or whatever, uh, you have to use it. If you you can't just just sit on it and forever it's yours like you have to use it in some way that's why there's these like weird ish weird things where people will use their trademark in some off uh yeah if you can't yeah if you can't use you can't defend exactly so they'll use their trademark as some like weird thing simply just to uh to have it or to 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 maintain it uh not for patents so so yeah the patent you could i guess own forever but you know how much of this is is well i don't know i have no idea honestly i have absolutely no idea Oh, it does have the Sony. Oh, of course it does. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to turn around and sell it and put Sony on it. <laughs> you would take it apart and sell it, uh, sell it for something else. Let me see. So here's some more pictures of it. Uh, I mean, that that is the. I have one of these right now. <laughs> this is the same plug that went into the back of my PS One. Actually, how funny! It is. It is the perfect hybrid of the Sony PlayStation and uh, the uh, the Super Nintendo. That's crazy. Same fucking plug, man. Seven point five volt and everything. That is hilarious. Controller, Super Nintendo controller with Nintendo. Look at Nintendo Super Famicom controller, and then at the end is a Sony. What an insane thing! Uh, here's the plugs right here. So you get—I uh, mean, obviously you're gonna get. Oh, you got S Video though. Hey, S Video. 
Uh, is that little thing in the bottom right the memory card? Let me see. Um, I don't see it here. There's a multi out there. I don't see a plug for it there or a socket. Uh, no, it does not look like it has a memory card. I mean, maybe that. I think that little screen on the top is an actual screen. I think this is an actual screen. Let me see. If I'm viewing at 16%. Oh, whoa! Okay. So it is a screen. <laughs> <laughs> the zoom <laughs> holy crap wow we could take a let's take a close look let's take a close look and see what we have here oh let's put the screen wow um well then hell let's go let's go find is there something to look at well i mean you kind of you kind of already see everything I guess this is to see the quality of it the build quality here this is what i want to see view full size let me go down here and take a look so super disc which is i want to say I want to say Super Disk is uh, SACD, so it's like it's a data disk that also has audio support, so you can put it in your in your audio, uh, you know, CD, you know, CD player or whatever. I don't know. I don't know if Super Disk and Super Audio CD are the same thing because think of like if, if you if you ever owned uh, it's a bit empty CD and DVD. Is it an actual format like a separate format? Because that's. Uh, I would have to see the specs on that because yeah, unless, unless SCD is like the um, 700 megabyte CD versus the 650 megabyte CD. Do you guys remember that? It used to be one and then versus the other. One of them held 74 minutes of audio. The other one held uh, 80 minutes of audio, if I recall correctly. Um, that that fade from the controller being yeah, you know that's a great observation too. Actually, wow, that's a really good observation, Inferno. This wherever this thing was sitting, the controller was plugged in. <laughs> For a long time. Imagine imagine if imagine if <coughs> uh, they had you know kept it like in a you know in, in some kind of like a sealed baggie or something. I don't know. <laughs> kept it somewhere that it wouldn't uh, yellow. So this site actually I've never been to Heritage Auctions, but um they actually have a ton of games. Secret of Mana here for six thousand dollars. This makes me mad because I mean I, I'm looking at the details of some of these. It seems like they're just original games. Like they're just the original games. That's sealed. It makes me mad because I wish I would have bought a bunch of games and just like not open them because I mean, I do have a whole bunch of games up there that are not open. Uh, so maybe in 20 years, I'll be able to do it. Here, here we go. Link to the past. You guys want to get a copy, a, a shrink wrapped copy of Link to the Past? Let's go view, view full size. Here we go. Look at that. The plastic is still on it. I mean, you could just shrink wrap that shit yourself, but whatever. Wow. <laughs> I. I, again, I've never seen this site, so it's like some of this stuff is like it's crazy. Here's two hundred ten dollars for Kirby's Dream Course. It's insane, insane. You wish you had a mortgage, your house, liver, and first thought about all the Bitcoin. Yeah, Super Disk format was designed uh, to supersede floppy disk and its higher capacity media that imitated the ubiquitous format. It's known for one hundred twenty megabytes and later two hundred forty megabytes of disk storage, while the Super Disk drive itself was backwards compatible one hundred one point four four floppy. Uh huh. There's something wrong with that description, though. It seems weird that a, an optical drive would be backwards compatible with a floppy disk because those are two different formats. Huh, weird. Um, some people have too much money. That's exactly what this is. This, this is a site for people that have too much money. Do you have too much money? Why don't you go pick up a copy of uh, Marvel Superheroes in War of the Gems, the classic game that everyone's heard of, for $210. Man, what is this one? I just want to look at Lord of the Rings, Volume 1, 86 bucks. <laughs> oh man just get a just get is this supposed to be like the meta metacritic score or something like that is that what this is right here do they all have that 8.5 why would they even put them like a, like a score up there like why even bother putting a score up there when you could just like i mean if, if you're gonna buy you're not okay let, let, let's be real if you if you're gonna spend fifteen hundred dollars on a game oh is that condition oh okay is that what that is quality great thank you let's zoom in let's zoom in i was gonna say if you're gonna spend fifteen hundred dollars on a game Let's zoom in here and see. Made in Japan, no rating, four, four line warranty box, seal rating C plus. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Got it. I thought it was like a score, like a, for the game. I was like, if you're going to spend that money on a game, you're not going to be like, well, hold on a second. <laughs> 9.8, this one here. Damn. A seal rating. Yeah, this one is a seal rating of A plus. Let's take a look at the seal just to inspect the quality here. Yep. 
No, that's uh Yeah, that's good. Yeah, boy. That's uh that's some quality seal. Shiny. Plasticky. It's good. A plus. <laughs> so there you go. Um <laughs> There's so much money we spent on this site. I mean, I'll flip it through some of these things. And I, 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 I didn't scroll down, by the way, because if you scroll down, there's some naked lady piece of art or something like that. And even though it's a piece of art, I already know. It's a good thing I checked this out before I went live. Uh, but yeah, so $350,000 if you want to go and pick yourself up a, uh, or if you want to participate in the vote, in the uh, bidding war for the, uh, uh, the Super Nintendo PlayStation hybrid console right there. Last up. Last up, who is this? See, who is that person? I know who does that. They still find they they still find old stock of uh, video games. If you have a friend with a warehouse full of random stuff, it's worth a look. No, yeah, no, it's true. Like I, I, there's a couple of stores in um in like downtown San Jose area that are like hole in the wall. Here's what it feels like. Uh, well, one of them I know for sure. Uh, there's a guy who runs this gaming store. And it's got a, it's basically just a couple of glass, just uh, uh, jewel cases. I think that's what they're called. Not jewel cases, um, glass cases. Uh, and inside the shelves, instead of like jewelry, uh, is just a bunch of uh, just game cartridges. Like no boxes, just game cartridges. It's laid out with like a little sticker with the prices. And there's just tons of games, just an insane amount of games all over the place. And, um, you know, I was talking to the dude and he, he is, uh, his parents run the restaurant next door. And I was like, oh, okay. Cause I was, I was like, how do you make money on this stuff? And it's like, I didn't, that wasn't his answer to that. That was just a general answer. And so I put it together. It's like, oh, I see your parents make money <laughs> and they allow you to run this store because I can't imagine that selling, you know, selling random games, uh, to people who are nostalgic for them for 15 to $30 a piece every other day, or maybe a couple times a day is enough to afford, um, you know, a downtown San Jose uh, storefront. You have to leave the cities to find the deals. I love some Japanese copies of Dragon Quest. Oh, man. Man, hipster chic. Uh, a Japanese copy of, of uh, Dragon Quest is like 15 bucks. Sam, there you go. There you go. Just go on eBay. I'm sure they're on there. Last up today. Last up today. This is, this is actually kind of an interesting feature that uh, Steam just put out. Uh, they just put out something called, well, they don't have a name for it. It's called Experiment 008 play next uh this is their recommendation engine where they will recommend games that you either have not played or that you uh have not played uh, enough of and i actually you know maybe it's actually games that you've not played at all because i know i played kerbal space program which is what makes me think uh but i don't think i played it on steam and i own it so hmm but yeah so going down here it's actually it's pretty interesting that uh you know because I, I I have like a ton of games. I'm sure, you, especially any of you guys who have uh, uh, gotten a humble bundle or any of the other bundles, indie game bundle, whatever bundle, uh, you, you end up with a ton of games you just don't use. And so, a Kerbal and CS is some some, some Oxygen not included. Yeah, and, you know it's funny they don't even know they don't even say oh yeah you play Oxygen not included you can play these games it's like no 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 but I get it I get it yeah uh, I hate Steam's recommend I never play idle games and that's all he's recommending to you oh weird you, I think you could filter tags you can filter tags so you could go through and probably just make it so that you don't see those ever again um, I don't see them I filter out like uh, uh, visual novels and and uh, certain kinds of games over there if it can half of which I probably never open yeah so this is a service for you I'll go ahead and put this in uh, in chat right now so. That way you guys could pop it open and see what it recommends you guys and then leave to go play those games. Um, but yeah, so you have, uh, for me, it's a City Skylines because I played Banished and Factorio and House Flipper. How funny. Um, and so, wow, I played House Flipper for almost as long as I played Banished. Well, not almost as long, but like two thirds for the length I played Banished. That to me sounds really weird. That sounds really weird. Especially when I had like a very long show where I just played Banished. Huh odd uh and then it says uh battle block theater because i play trick towers don't start together in lost castle okay okay curious what else it has uh race the sun speed runners prison architect oh how funny it thinks i haven't played prison architect there's another game i have a show for <laughs> unconscious interior decorator dreams probably yeah it was all that cleaning for reals uh yeah huh i mean for me, this is, I mean, I think this is great because, and for everybody, this is, this is a great feature because, you know, Steam has so many fucking games and a lot of people have so many games in their library 
that this is the this is the perfect way to um to get you to start playing some of these games that you haven't played before there's lots of times i'll just sit there on the couch and i'm just like and, and what'll happen is or like sit right here uh i'll pop up in steam and i'm like going through my i'm just going through the list and i spend more time i basically spent all the time it's like oh i have an hour i'll just go i'll just go you know chill on the couch and just play a game you know for an hour and then i'll go to sleep and then i spend that entire hour looking for a game to play and so yeah i would like to have a recommendation system for sure uh they do have a you haven't played these games yet that already exists but that doesn't do this like that doesn't do what this does and they've already had the recommendations or the uh if you go to the store pages it'll say you uh it says you may like this based on the fact that you played these other two games and typically you know those those uh, recommendations are kind of weird and just kind of like off the wall it's like oh you you want to play overcooked because you played uh catherine and it's like well what <laughs> um but yeah this is uh what is this the feature makes more sense the more games you got exactly and, I, and i'm fairly certain that almost everybody that's here right now watching this show has more than 50 games i'm certain i this if any if, if you have less than 50 games then i mean not a slight or anything like that but i just i just feel like your account is new or um you were not you're not around buying games when all the bundles were huge that's got to be it but yeah yeah so there you go 523 uh 899 50 games is a noob's liar. It has, I know, I know. I have one of 50 games on Epic already just from the free ones. Five or 10 games and recommendations are usually bad for me. You insult us, Mike. I mean, I'm trying to, I'm trying to lowball here. Uh, 332, uh, it wants you to play uh, uh, Portal 2. Play Portal 2. Have you not played Portal 2? That's a good one. That's a good one, Yegorex. Seriously, Portal 2 is a lot of fun. Um, uh, 1065. Damn, 1273 plus a lot unactivated. Jesus, 319. Jesus, I have like 50 game boxes, <laughs> like not even counting digital game. I have like 50 games, like, you know, more than 50 games physical for fuck's sake. Yeah. 340 ish. There you go. Yeah. So, um, you only have 36. You, you know, you're lying. You're lying. Get out of here with them lies. <laughs> 1590. You know, it amazes me when people have more games than I do. Right. And I only say that, let me see how many games I have. Uh, I say that because I didn't buy all these games. Like, a lot of these games are from your guys' generosity. Just like, hey, Mike might like this game, and you throw it at me. Uh, I have 1,148 games. And so when I, you know, given that, you know, I am somebody who has, you know, people that watch shows and everything, and people who think of me when they buy these games, which that's the that's the part that's most touching, is that you'll, you'll see a game, and you're like, hey, I think Mike might like this game. And then you buy it. It's like, that to me, it's, it's the thought that counts, right? Uh, even if I end up never playing it. Uh, but I will when I'm retired. Uh, but yeah, to see that people have more games than what I have, that is like a staggering amount. I just That's just crazy. Um, with all the weird crap you send your way, ah, that was weird. Yeah, Hello, what the fuck? If you include console games in that, oh man, yeah, if I include console games, like especially the Xbox Live Any Game Store, uh, I probably have, well, I mean, I probably have like 250 games on my Xbox, at least, uh, at Xbox Live Indie Game Store. Like, I'm certain that that's about where I'm sitting right now. Um, in the grave. No, don't say that. <laughs> my heart's already hurting. Uh, the people with 600 games is because they have 900 copies of Bad Rats. <laughs> of what? Uh, there's one buck games. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. A lot of bundles. Man. I need more. No, I don't. <laughs> uh let me see i think that's actually it there's not mm, epic games has a new game pre new, new president uh it's adam suspend i have suspends previously of zynga games and nike kind of weird transition but you know he was at zynga games during their formative years when they were laying everybody off so uh now he's over at epic game store or epic games as a whole uh we don't know what the, what he's going to do what his plans are or anything like that i didn't even know that they necessarily needed a president i don't know what the current status is on anything else but uh so yeah there you go uh zinga and nike it's not like a good combo well nike made headlines today because uh, uh some lawyer i don't remember his name but he was trying to extort them for 20 million dollars or something like that stormy daniels lawyer you guys know who that is 
I kind of saw going for a high total when it seemed open the floodgate of garbage shit games. He said around 70, 70 to 75% of the entire store back in the day. Yeah, and then it's just like a tons. Uh, Wilson has 10, 10 problems, 2,000 players to 50,000 at once. Yep. So, that is it for the news. For those of you folks who are watching this live, stay tuned. We'll come back with we'll bullshit a little bit. And then we'll get out of here. But for those of you guys who are watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Chat, thank you so much for being here for me today. I appreciate it very, very, very much. Apparently, everyone's going to be playing Wilson when they leave. So... There you go. There you go. There you go. Poor Brothgar. Oh, wait, wait. Has he got his stuff back? Urgh. He still doesn't have his shit back. It's fucked up. Uh, but that's it. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Find me, aka Mike B, all the things, aka Mike B Photo on all the things, including OnlyFans now. Ah, I'll see you guys. Bye.